Hello everybody, Yu-Gi-Oh! Stories here. I wanted to do a video discussing um, some of the best engines in Yu-Gi-Oh! This is not like a definitive, like, yes, the number one is the best list, number ten is the worst. It's about more my opinions, just um, what I know about the game. And I just want to be talking about engines, because I think engines is what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! so cool. Being able to play different archetypes or little parts of archetypes into decks that they're not really supposed to mix with, but, you know, they manage to mix really well. Some things like Shadow Fusion, we've seen play in Orcus, we've seen play in like going second decks, Shadow Fusion with a dragon, you know, Mech Knights. Mech Knight with purple and blue, you can play two of each, that's a little Mech Knight engine, or you can make a bigger. Speed with Terra Top, you know, three Terra Top, Socket Board, Wind Witch, Ice Bell, you know, free Crystal Wing, just kind of locks you into Wind. Artifact Sanctum, you know, three Sanctum and the one Scythe. Or back in hat format, they're actually playing Moral Tech. So definitely interesting how you can see engines evolve through time, how engines don't necessarily stay the same, but are still used throughout time. Sideframe Gamma. This card was a whole deck, Sideframe deck, but now it's one of the best hand traps in the game. It comes with that one brick, just like Terra Top, but still a really good engine. It's, a, it, it's hard to call it an engine, because you can really just call it a hand trap. But... um. The reason why it is an engine is because it has your engine requirement, the driver, the brick. Because you can't just play three gammas. You you can't resolve it. You gotta play that brick. That's why I think of it as an engine, even though we can call it an engine and a hint trap. But that's neither here nor there. One of the best engines, but it's not currently banned. Brilliant Fusion. You know, three Brilliant Fusion and your two your Garnet or like Glossuli, I think you could do as well to get a normal monster back. And then, you know, whatever you were doing. It was really cool because uh, Thunder Dragon is actually using Brilliant Use Fusion not to make Seraph Knight, but to just make the Thunder one. So really cool, like I said, how you can see uh, engines evolve throughout time, you know, using in different decks. All right, let's get started with number 10, Chaos Babies. White Dragon, White Burster, and Black Dragon, Collapse Serpent. These cards have been used so much throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! history. The fact that they're just both plus ones, free special summons. Now they're both at one. But we got Chaos Space, helping them out a lot, getting them to see more consistently, as well as shuffling them back in. Before, when they went to one, you kind of just got a free plus one off of them. But now if you add, if you have Chaos Space, then you can actually, you know, go white to get the black, and then black banish white to summon it. Chaos Space put it back, and black gets white, or vice versa. So Chaos Space give a little bit more life to this engine, Used to be a six card or four card engine. Of course, now it's just one, one, and three. Super strong. Any any chaos deck can run it. You know why wouldn't you? It's free bodies. Commonly now it's seen in Dragon Link. Super powerful cards in Dragon Link. Free plus ones. And of course, saw a lot of play in Light Swarms. And I can't even begin to list all of the chaos decks that actually played these. Moving on to number nine, Perform Ages. Flushfire. Before it even got banned. You know, Pendulum decks wanted to abuse it. Got banned. Whatever. Let's not talk about that. These actually saw a lot of play. Uh, Hat Tricker, just being an extender, just being a free body on board, level 4, it saw play. I think it recently actually saw play with Adam Emancipators. Um, it's not seeing play right right now, but there was variants running around playing Hat Tricker. It's an Earth, it's a free summon if you have two bodies on board. Pretty cool. And then things like Juggler and Trick Clown have been used in like graveyard decks and as well. Necros was actually abusing them when they came out just because of all the free tribute fodder they would give them, help them make rank fours. And yeah, this is number nine, Trick Clown. These are not the only decks that have used Trick Clown as an engine. Not just Trick Clown, but Damage Juggler and even Hat Tricker. Sometimes all together, sometimes just Damage Jugglers with Trick Clown together. There are a lot more, of course. These are just some of the honorable mentions that have been used these engines. All right, next for number eight, Light Swarm. Again, just like Chaos Babies, I can't even begin to say how many decks have used Light Swarm as an engine. Anytime a deck comes out that is any sort of graveyard focused, like Burning Abyss, like Phantom Knights, Eldritch, anything like that, people usually test it out with Light Swarm. Just because of the ability to send cards to the graveyard so freely. Usually it's uh, Raiden and Charge, but you know, sometimes people can play a bigger Light Swarm engine, you know. It's a really old deck, but it still sees, you know, um, people testing with it, people mixing it with decks. 
I think more now than ever, it's just being played with Eldritch, if that's even a thing anymore. But yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised in the future if people use new decks with Light Swarm. Light Swarm is just that strong. You know, sending cards to the graveyard, super powerful mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! And Light Swarm is definitely going to be seeing more future play. Whether it's in little variants, like, you know, 3 charge and the Raiden. Or if you're playing, like, you know, 3, 2, then this, at 3 and a Wolf or something like that. Light Swarm will definitely be an engine that's here to stay in Yu-Gi-Oh! All right, next we got Invoked. Invoked, being able to use any type of attribute to make a fusion monster, super cool, super strong. You can play it in so many decks, especially decks that don't have a normal summon. Alistair is perfect for that. And it being a one card engine, just it just means that you always have a follow up play, you know. So Invoked, very good. It can be mixed in with a lot of decks. Commonly, it's been seen with Eldritch, even though I don't know if that's still going around. Trickstar, this was back when, you know, Invoke Trickstar was a thing, for all y'all that remember. It was pretty good. Corbane and Alistair, you know, make you the Link 2, the Alistair Link 2. And you could just go to a lot of plays. They were played with Mech Knights. Like, Invoke is just so crazy. Commonly right now, it's seen Invoke Dogmatica. Pretty good deck. i definitely call it a tier 1.5 contender, in my opinion. It's not, not quite there with Dragon Link and Emancipator right now, but it's a super strong deck. You can't, you know, don't forget that this deck is a thing. And back when Sky Striker and Gage was around, Invoked Sky Striker, pretty cool deck, honestly. Always wanted to play it, but, uh, you know, Engage got banned. But yeah, Invoked, one of the best engines the game has seen. A lot of people are arguing it could actually get hit now, but I think it'll stick around. Really good engine. Really glad Konami actually printed this. I think it's really cool. A uh, one card negate is super awesome. But um, you know, if anything were to happen to the engine, you know, we've had it all around for a long time. But yeah, really good engine invoked. All right. Now this is where we start getting crazy. Before the decks were like splashed into certain types of decks, the decks coming up are a little bit more free in a way. Dangers have been used in so many decks. You guys know Danger FTK. Dangers with Orcus was very popular. I used Dangers in Salamangre back when um we had two Jackalope and two Tasunoko. Dangers with Thunder Dragons was a hell of a deck. It was one of the strongest decks last format. Well, not last format, but last year, I should say. They were also seen with Burning Abyss. You know, everything worked in the graveyard. You didn't really care if you discard it. And Tatsunoko and Jackalope help you make your Dante. Luna Light, Danger, Orcus, super crazy. And sometimes it wasn't even playing Orcus. Sometimes it was just Luna Light, Danger. And like I said, I played Dangers in my um, Salaman Grade deck. Just goes to show you that this engine is very powerful to the point that they're all at one now. These are also free bodies, or they just help you draw. Dangers, super powerful deck. Grand Maju still uses it. Uh, I don't know if it's seen a lot of play now, but this engine was just so strong. So many decks played it, and yeah. Next, Dogmatica. This deck just came out, and it's already being seen splashed with so many things. Commonly, it's just uh, Ecclesia, you know, that uh, spell, Nadir Servant. And then sometimes people play, a lot of times we play Punishment. Fleur de Lis usually at one. Maximus, a lot of people on the TCG aren't playing it. This is super popular in the OZG. Dogmatica, definitely one of the newest engines to come out. Very strong engine. Um, being used with Eldritch, being used with Invoke. And the OCG is actually seeing play with Shadals. And I don't mean just using like the Schism and the extra deck cards. There is full-on Shadal decks that use Dogmatica as well. And of course, I could also see play with Necros. Dogmatic was just made super strong. The fact that it locks you out of the extra deck, usually you do the, your place and then you do your Dogmatica place, helping you get even more pluses, whether it be with Punishment off of Ecclesia, or you do a Deer Servant, Ecclesia, Punishment, and then um, of course you send the Ash Dragon. The Ash Dragon gets you the Knight and the End Phase. It's just so many, so much free plus ones. That's what modern engines. Um, make them really good if they can 
just get you free advantage from one card. One card to the other card to the other card. If you think about it in a Dear Servant, it's a plus one because of a Titan Clad gets you this. Then I'll get you the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia will get you another plus one, so it's a plus two. And then Punishment it could be a two for one or a one for one. And then it'll get you another Ash Dragon search. So that's why this engine is so strong. So many cards just giving you plus ones and giving you follow up place and realistically a negate and a disruption. Super strong. Dogmatica is going to see a lot of future play. I think Eldritch Dogmatica and the TCG at least will probably be some of the you know best variant. And next up, Eldritch. You know, I didn't think about the fact of Eldritch as an engine. But um, I wouldn't. I think it's one of those different ones that it's not like people play an Eldritch engine. It's more like people play the Eldritch deck, and then they decide what kind of engine they want to put into it. There's been so many different Eldritch variants. These are not half of it. These are there's so many. Anything that uses a normal summon, you know, can play Eldritch. They don't really use a normal summon. Right now, it's really popular with Jet Synchron. Doing your little synchro combos. It's been seen playing with Trick Stars, Magical Musketeers, Invoked, Dogmatica, anything you can think of that is a normal summon. Eldritch probably has seen experimentation with it. It's traps cards being so strong, being able to constantly generate you advantage. Super cool. Golden Lord, pretty good going second. And it's just summoning and defense of a sanguine. Super strong. Its own effect makes it super buff, and then it can't be destroyed by card effects. They do restrict you after you use them. So, you know, you can't use Sanguine and then do any plays because you have to be doing Zombies. Curse to Outland, you can only attack with Zombies. Things that people forget, so I'll try to catch your opponent on things like that if they do it to you. But usually just people get Outland off the field and usually use Sanguine during their opponent's turn or something so they can still do all their regular non-Zombie plays on their turn. Eldritch, definitely one of the top, top, engine in a game but not as strong as the next ones sky strikers let me tell you when strikers first came out <laughs> warrior link was the better deck but even warrior link was using striker cards they were using engage and drones and sometimes wonkagari to help you get back that drones or that engage or whatever strikers has been seen so many decks mixed with it from true dracos scrap strikers like I said earlier, Warriors, you know, Goki, using Engage and Horned Drones. Even in the OCG and for Noble Knights right now, are using the two Engage and the one Horned Drones. Invoked Strikers. Orchid Strikers, one of the most powerful decks ever, in my opinion. Trickstar Strikers. Sky Strikers were just so splashable because you can do all your plays with no monsters on the field, or a monster in the extra monster zone. You could still use all your Striker spells alive. One of my favorite interactions was when people used Engage to search, um, what's that one called? The booster, like Eagle booster, to protect their mermaids. Oh, spoilers. To protect the mermaid from, um, you know, getting hand trapped. It was really cool seeing interactions like that. And the fact that these two decks, Striker and Orcas, were, you know, facing each other a lot until someone decided to put them together. Next up. You guys already saw it, Zodiac. I don't think an archetype has ever made such a huge impact on the meta as much as Zodiacs. Maybe Dogmatica. You know, as soon as Dogmatica came out, they were being splashed to a lot of things. But Zodiacs being splashed to everything. Invoked, Metal Foes, 60 card grass decks, including Infernoids, including Light Swarm, True Dracos, Luna Lights. Oh, spoiler for the last one. Damn, I keep spoiling it for you guys. I'm sorry. So many decks. Can't even mention all of them. Rap here was so broken. Barrage was so broken. Definitely reminds me a lot of um, Dogmatica, but without the restrictions. It was more like a free Dryden Pop, kind of like Punishment. Broadbull was a free plus one, kind of like Ecclesia or Titan Dragon. And Rap here was just so much advantage. Rap here at three, being able to go into the Augusto Emerald or any rank four. There was a Bujin rank for it that like melts five. A lot of people are using that. Tudiak was just super strong. Barrage popping things was very powerful when it came to, you know, getting advantage of your own cards, like your two Drago cards, popping like a field spell for the invoke that you don't really care about. 
popping a tiger off barrage super powerful bow baboon off a of barrage super strong zodiac definitely one of the strongest engines if y'all were around playing this format you guys know how dominant this engine was and of course i spoiled it for you guys orcus the thing that sets orcus apart from every other engine was the fact that any two monsters with different names was a whole combo getting you to Galatea, either doing a negate that banished and gave you a search, or a Dengirsu disruption by sending a card without targeting. Orcus was seeing so much play. Um, Mermaid got banned really quick, in my opinion, which it kind of had to, you know, like anything was playing Orcus, everything was playing Orcus. It's without a doubt the best engine in the game. I would say even now, if our prior came back, um, we would still see a lot of Orcus variants, you know, mixed, even without Mermaid, just with Harpar. The fact that it locked you into Dark was sucky, but um, people started doing it towards the end of their combos. They would do all their shenanigans and then just make two monsters and do an Orcus combo. It was crazy. You could play through hand traps, you know, and just continue doing your combos. As long as you had two monsters, different names, mermaid, discard, you were going into another combo. Super strong. It was used in, um, I think what mainly like made me like crazy was um, the shout out to three stacks. I think this was last year in Nats when um, he piloted Pendulum Sephira Orcus. This deck was so crazy. Had so many engines. I think it was playing Guard Dragons, it was playing Sephira. I was playing Orcus. It was so crazy, super strong. Played through so many hand traps and in pendulums. You just left your two monsters and then went to Nightmare Mermaid. Super crazy, so many negates. And it wasn't just monster negates. You can get the Orcus negates, the Sephir negates. So yeah, shout out to Three Stacks. This deck was crazy. He um actually started piloting this deck after he like after I saw his deck profile and saw how how much power the deck had going first or second. But um. It does suck when you draw your breaks in this deck, but you know, that happens with every deck. Other honorable mentions that Orcus engines were using, kind of dangerous. I wouldn't say it was an engine, a lot of people were running it, but a lot of people weren't. So that was like something you had to decide. Did you want your dangers? Uh, people wanted to run call by to make sure the mermaid went through. Dangers kind of went against that. But a lot of people liked just dumping your Orcus stuff and, you know, drawing. Trickstar, this was originally probably the most often played combo. Uh, Candino for Corobain to go into your Orcus combo. Or sometimes if you had um, the field spell, Corobain and then normal Harpar, that was really strong too. Orcus with Sky Strikers, one of the most, most powerful decks in my opinion. Um, you know, being able to play Engage and Dean Kirsu in the same deck. And the fact that the uh, Sky Striker links were machines, super good. Um, it gives you a lot of like versatility to deck. Having Widow Anchor, having, you know, you you could tech out the deck. You could play a Shark Cannon if you want, Afterburner. It was really cool. Engage gave you a lot of versatility. Orcus, Lunalites, super powerful too. It seems like I say super powerful for any deck that Orcus was in, but that's really how it was. Um, You know, another... One is like Orcus Warriors, which I kind of mentioned earlier. And um, one is super, super, super strong in my opinion. Cyber Dragon Orcus, being able to put up Infinity before the Mermaid, being able to play through Nibiru. Yeah, it was super crazy. Um, but yeah, sorry to Mermaid, but sorry to Harp Harder as well. But Orcus, for sure, one of the strongest engines the game has ever seen. Um, maybe Dogmatica can actually take over, you know, depending on time. Time will tell. Dogmatica is better. But personally, I believe Ark is super strong. And uh, Farfa recently had a, a traditional format where everything was like, anything that the band is at one. Orcus was seeing a lot of play. You know, Harp Heart to one, super strong. Hopefully we get it back in this next list because, you know, they're probably not hitting anything. They're probably only taking stuff out. But yeah, thank you all for watching. If you guys think I missed any engines, let me know down below any engines you think I missed that were super impactful in the meta or just, you know, cool little things. Thank you all for watching and peace.